Hi folks! I'll show you how to make this musical instrument using a few electronic components, a piece of paper, and a pencil. It's simple to make and loads of fun to play and experiment with. Here's a generic circuit diagram showing all the parts needed. And here are the actual parts. It's all based around this wonderful chip called the 555 timer chip. One of the most popular chips out there, and so it's easy to find. For the resistors, you'll need 51 ohms, 1 kilo ohms, and 6.8 kilo ohms. For the capacitors, you'll need a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. To power it, you'll need some batteries. I'm using 6 volts to power it, so I have these four 1.5 AA batteries and a battery holder to put them in. The single 9 volt battery will also work. For the speaker, I'm using a piezo buzzer, available at electronic stores like Radio Shack. And to put it all together, I have a breadboard and some wires. I'm using solid 24 gauge wire, but use whatever works with your breadboard. You'll also need one wire with alligator clips on both ends, also available in electronic stores. And lastly, you'll need a sheet of paper and a pencil. Here's a diagram I'll be following, showing how I put everything on the breadboard. First, I got a piece of wood and hot glued my battery holder and breadboard to it. That's just for my convenience. Skip it if you don't want to do this. Then put the batteries in the holder. Plug the black negative wire from the batteries in this hole here. That hole is electrically connected to all these other holes, so anything plugged into them will also be connected to battery negative. Plug a black wire between these two holes. So all these holes are now connected together and are connected to battery negative. Then plug a red wire between these two holes. Later we'll be plugging battery positive into this hole, so all these holes will be connected to battery positive when we do. If you look closely at the 555 timer chip, you'll notice it has 8 pins. And in this corner is a round dot. That dot means the pin at that corner is pin 1. Put the chip here on the breadboard, so that the deep ridge in the middle of the breadboard runs under it. That way all these holes are connected to this pin, all these holes are connected to this pin, all these holes are connected to this pin, and so on. Looking at the chip from the top, as I said, since the dot is here, this is pin 1, this is pin 2, and so on, up to pin 8. Next, connect a red wire between these holes. That connects pin 8 to battery positive. Taking the 1 kilo ohm resistor, plug either leg in this hole, and the other leg in this hole. That connects it between battery positive and pin 7. Plug the 0.1 microfarad capacitor in these holes, orient it either way. That connects it between battery negative and pin 6. Plug either leg of the 6.8 kilo ohm resistor in this hole, and the other leg in this hole. I'll come back to that resistor again later. That's it for that side of the chip, for now. Next, plug one end of a wire into this hole, and the other end in this hole. That connects pin 6 to pin 2. Plug another wire between these holes. That connects pin 1 to battery negative. Plug a wire between these holes. That connects pin 4 to battery positive. Next, plug the 51 ohm resistor in these holes, oriented either way. That connects one end to pin 3. Now for the 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Notice that it has a stripe on one side with a minus sign on it, or something like that. That side is negative, and the other side is positive. Notice also that the positive leg is longer than the negative leg. Plug the positive leg in this hole, and the negative leg in this hole. That connects the positive leg to the 51 ohm resistor. And now for the speaker. Plug the end of either of its wires into this hole, next to the negative of the capacitor. Plug the other wire in this hole, connecting it to battery negative. Next, take the wire with the alligator clips on it and clip one end to this leg of the 6.8 kilo ohm resistor. Don't worry about the other end of the wire for now. And lastly, get a long wire, around one foot long, and plug one end here, in the row for pin 7. Don't do anything with the other end for now. Finally, it's time to make the keyboard. Here's where we use the paper and pencil. Draw a thick, short line on the paper starting near one end. Make sure the line is wide and really filled in, a good solid black. Now connect the alligator clip that we left for later to the paper, such that the teeth of the clip are touching the pencil mark. Now to turn it on. Plug the red wire from the battery holder, the battery positive, into this hole. Take the unconnected end of the foot long wire that you plugged into pin 7 and touch the pencil mark somewhere. You should sure hear sound from the speaker. If you don't, move the wire around on the pencil mark. If you still don't, then the problem could be with your pencil. This pencil didn't work for me, but this one did, even though they're both HB type pencils. What's going on? The 555 timer chip sends square waves like this to the speaker. They're what causes the speaker to make a sound. Those waves can be high frequency ones like this, or low frequency ones like this, or anything in between. What controls the frequency? The number of components together control the frequency, but you can do a lot by playing around with the resistance here, where normally just the 6.8 kilo ohm resistor is located. Notice that the pencil mark is connected to one end of that resistor. The pencil mark contains graphite, which conducts electricity. 
so it's as if we're drawing wires on the paper. But graphite isn't a very good conductor. It resists the flow of electricity. You can see this using a multimeter set to the resistance scale. Here I'm setting mine to the 200 kilo ohm scale. If I touch the alligator clip and then touch the pencil mark here, you can see there's around 10 kilo ohms of resistance. If I touch it here instead, you can see the resistance is higher, around 32 kilo ohms. The longer the length of graphite that the electricity has to travel through, the higher the resistance. The higher the resistance, the lower the frequency. And the lower the resistance, the higher the frequency. So what we've done is put two resistors in series in that place in the circuit. The 6.8 kilo ohm resistor and the pencil mark resistor. But we can adjust the resistance of the pencil mark resistor by touching it in different places, thereby adjusting the frequency, and therefore the sound. There's another thing you can adjust too. Notice that the line is very short, meaning that all the notes from my musical instrument are confined to this short space. You can make a longer space to work with by making a longer mark. But the longer you have the electricity travel, the more resistance it'll have at that longest distance, and so the lower frequency at that distance. What if you want a longer space but the same frequency range as the shorter mark? In that case, just widen the mark. For example, remember that with the meter, we saw the resistance from here to here was around 32 kilo ohms. Now if I draw another mark for the same length but wider, the resistance over the same length is around 12 kilo ohms. That's because there's more room for the electricity to travel along the mark, so the resistance is lower. So to get around 32 kilo ohms, I have to make the mark longer. So now I have a longer space for my musical notes to fit into. It's easier to play. And here's the finished one with all the places for the musical notes clearly indicated. Done. All that's left is to have some fun. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more fun videos like this. That includes one where I use this same circuit to do more fun things, like solve a maze the easy way, and an automatic music player. Another about how to make a speaker using piezoelectric crystals. And one about how to make a Stirling engine from household parts. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Or give a thumbs up, or leave a question, or comment below. See you in a bit.